pancakes. The smell of free, sweet fried batter woke Anna up. Pancakes. Pancakes were a bad sign. It meant her father was revving himself up, starting to spin again. She lay there for a moment, wishing she could find a way to sneak out of the house, but that would mean leaving Sylvie behind. Pancakes, my darlings, get them while they're hot. Be down in five. It was her father's cheery, fake Irish voice, another bad sign. Anna hurried out of bed and down the hall. Who knew what he would do if they weren't downstairs right away? Anna could hear Sylvie stirring in her room, singing this old man over and over to herself, as she did every morning. She bad, padded barefoot to Sylvie's room and opened the door. Sylvie, who had just turned five, had dressed herself in an old red tutu from the toy box, a blue and pink beanie, and a pair of plastic cowboy boots. Her four stuffed animals were standing propped against the wall like some Toyland police lineup. And Sylvie was looking down at them critically as though they had gravely disappointed her. Daddy's waiting downstairs for us. He made pancakes. Anna tried to make them sound like the best things in the world, hoping Sylvie would hurry downstairs with her. I don't like pancakes anymore, Anna. Sylvie started slowly assembling a new tableau of stuffed animals and naked Barbies, as though she had all the time in the world. Come on, Sylvie, Daddy's waiting for us. Annie took, Anna, Anna took Sylvie's hand to urge her along, but Sylvie pulled back. I'm not hungry. If Sylvie refused to go downstairs, that would really start their father spinning. Please, Anna said. To her relief, Sylvie shrugged in a queenly, let's get this over with way, and headed for the stairs. Their father was at the stove, a ratty dish towel around his waist. He was big, with a shock of red hair that spiked up from the top of his head, and a thick red beard. He took up all the space in that small kitchen, and it felt like to Anna like there was no room for anyone else. The two girls stood in the doorway and looked at him as he simultaneously smoked, manned the cast iron skillet, and scratched at his beard. Two stacks of pancakes collapsed against each other on the chipped counter. An ashtray overflowing with half-smoked cigarettes showed how long he'd been awake. He grinned when he saw them. There you are, he shouted and swept a plate in front of Sylvie's face like a waiter in a fancy restaurant. Look, my darling, I've made your name in pancakes, a special present from your best daddy. Sylvie stuck two fingers in her mouth and mumbled around them. You're not my best daddy. You're my only one. That's right, their father said. I am the only dad. And I am, he raised his spatula above his big head like a scepter and boomed, the king, the king of pancakes, the king of Sunday mornings, the king of this house. Anna's breath caught. He was starting to spin, spin and spin. But if Sylvie cooperated, he might stop. Everything might be okay. She took the plate carefully from their father and presented it to Sylvie. Sylvie, they're beautiful, she said. Sylvie peered at the plate and poked her forefinger at one of the pancakes. That's not a V, that's a U, and it looks like a butt. Anna jumped in before her father could say anything. Sylvie, it's hard to make a, B, a V from pancake batter. The rest of the letters are perfect. And just think, you get to eat your name today. Anna, I told you already, I don't like pancakes. Their father turned toward them. He had that look, the raised eyebrow, the mouth drawn down. That's not true. You girls love my pancakes, he said. Everybody loves my pancakes. Anna could hear his breath like something hard had started burning inside him. I don't want them. They're squishy inside. I want Cheerios. <coughs> there was a long pause. Suddenly, their father slammed down the spatula and turned off the burner. Then he grabbed the plate from Anna's hand. You don't like your name in pancakes? Fine. They're gone. S-Y-L-V-I-E is gone. In one motion, he scraped the pancakes into the garbage can and then threw the plate into the sink so hard that it broke in two. But you will eat the breakfast I made you. 
Anna wanted to wake their mother, but she'd just gotten home from her shift at the hospital. If she woke, she would not be able to go back to sleep. Besides, Anna was 15. She should be able to handle this herself. Their father stacked pancakes on another plate until it couldn't hold anymore and shoved it into Sylvie's hands. He leaned down until his face was an inch from hers and said, remember, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> Sylvie stared down at the plate. I want Cheerios, she said in a voice so small that Anna could barely hear her. Come on, Sylvie, she said, speaking to her father as much as to her sister. Let's have a pancake eating contest. I bet you can eat more than me. I'm not eating any. I hate them. Sylvie said, her head still down. We don't hate anything in this family, their father said. Then he grabbed her arm and tugged her toward the dining room. You come with me. Ow! I am not hurting you. Yes, you are, Sylvie cried, pulling back from him. But she sounded more petulant than pained. Their father looked over his shoulder at Anna. His face was rigid and pale, like he was the one being hurt. Get the syrup, Anna. Our Sylvie loves syrup. Dad, Anna whispered to him, as though keeping something from her sister. Geez, just let her have cereal. But her father pretended not to hear. Anna stood for a minute in the kitchen. She didn't know what to do. Sit down, she heard her father sh shout from the dining room. And Sylvie shouted back, why are you being mean? Anna picked up the bottle of syrup. She took her time walking the six feet to the dining room, as though in those few seconds, Sylvie might come to her senses and everything would magically get better. Because all Sylvie had to do was say, okay, daddy, that's all she had to do. Then he would hug her and call her his big smart girl. And in 10 minutes, the pancakes would be forgotten. But Anna knew Sylvie wouldn't say it. She hadn't learned how to. Sylvie was seated at the table, the pancakes in front of her. She looked very small. Their father stood behind, leaning over her, his hands pressing down on her shoulders, tears welling in his eyes, his big face now splotched red. I'm not being mean to you, Sylvie. You're being mean to me. You're making me sad, telling me you hate my pancakes, making me throw out the beautiful little letters I made just for you, making me break a plate. Sylvie squirmed, stop squeezing my shoulders. Anna, please give me the syrup, he said. Dad, come on. He looked at her. Anna, don't you make me sad too. You're my favorite girl. Don't make me sad. The world had shrunk to just Anna, Sylvie, and their father looming over them. He reached out a hand for the bottle. Anna wanted to say no. She wanted to take the bottle and throw it in the garbage, but she was too afraid. After a moment, she handed it to her father. He tipped it upside down, letting the sticky, sticky liquid flow until an immense puddle formed. Now eat, please, for your daddy, who loves you more than anything in the world. Sylvie kept her head down. When she didn't move, her father picked up the fork and forced it into her, into her hand. Then he covered his, her hand with his own and cut a wedge of pancake. You make me so sad, Sylvie. He brought the fork full of pancake to her mouth. Sylvie squeezed her lips shut and he forced the metal tines between them. Why do I have to feed you like a baby? Why are you making me do this? <clears throat> Sylvie turned her head away, but her father's meaty hand took her jaws and slowly, almost lovingly, turned her head back to him and squeezed until he forced her mouth open. Inch by inch, the fork with its weight of pancake slid into her mouth. Anna could almost feel the metal tines pressing into her own mouth, sharp and insistent. She wanted to say stop. She wanted to grab her father's hand and pull it away from Sylvie's mouth. Their father slid the empty fork out and pressed Sylvie's lower jaw until her mouth closed. He was crying silently now, tears wetting his beard. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you for acting like a big girl. 
He wiped his wet face with his free hand. Sylvie breathed hard through her nose. Her cheeks bulged with food. He released Sylvie's mouth. Take the next bite yourself. I know you can do it. They're delicious, and I made them just for you. Sylvie leaned over her plate, coughed once, and then retched loudly, spewing chunks of pancake onto the table. Sylvie, their father cried, why are you doing this to me? She's not doing anything to you, Brian. They looked up. Their mother was standing in the doorway between the dining room and the living room, her old pale blue robe drowning her thin frame, her eyes bleary. Their father sat back and wiped the tears from his eyes. She wouldn't eat the pancakes, he said. Anna could see him struggling not to cry again, but he failed. Their mother stepped between their father and Sylvie. She ran her hand through Sylvie's hair and wiped her mouth with a napkin. Then she picked up the plate and carried it to the kitchen. Anna should have been the one to stop him. She should have taken the plate away as her mother had done. It was so simple, but she hadn't been able to do it. And now her mother was awake. Anna could hear her scraping pancakes into the garbage, running water over the plates. Sylvie, their mother called, do you want anything else for breakfast? I'm not hungry. Fair enough, their mother said, and weariness flooded her voice. She stepped back into the dining room where the three of them still sat. Brian, go outside. Dixie, I, I just love my girls so, so much. Their mother folded her arms. Just go outside, go for a walk. He rose from the table and went out through the kitchen door. Anna could see him by the swing set, staring at them through the window. Then he walked past the garage, into the alley, and disappeared. The girls silently cleared the rest of the table while their mother finished cleaning the kitchen. Go on upstairs, girls, she said finally. Anna went up and lay on her bed. She thought of going out, but she was afraid she'd see her father walking around and around the block-sized park near their house, muttering to himself the way he did, spinning and spinning. Finally, she got up and crossed the hall to Sylvie's room. Sylvie, Sylvie was piling her dolls and stuffed animals on her unmade bed. In one corner, she had stacked her favorite clothes, a, an old pair of tap shoes, a pink Barbie t-shirt, and a long purple skirt that had once belonged to Anna. She turned to Anna and gestured, to, gestured at the bed. It's a boat. We're leaving. Where are you going? Sylvie sighed, just away from this house. Is there room for me? Sylvia looked Anna up and down, considering. And for that moment, Anna was afraid her sister would say no. Thank you.